One of the most overlooked collections we have here at the Salisbury Museum are the annual remains we have from the Ice Age. Now the Ice Age is a really misleading term because the period in fact was both warm and cold. It stretched back for about two and a half million years and it's today referred to as the Pleistocene. And during this time sometimes the climate was incredibly warm like Africa and there were animals like lion and hyena kind of marauding across the savannah. On other occasions the climate was much 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 colder. The entire country was covered in ice sheets and no animals or humans lived here at all. There were also occasions when it was perhaps more similar to Siberia, the kind of Siberian steppe, where animals like woolly mammoth, and woolly rhino, which are extinct today, kind of roamed across the plains. Now the collections we have here at Salisbury Museum are all from Fisherton, which is just to the west of Salisbury Town Centre. And they were found during the 19th century when houses were constructed and also brick earth was extracted from the ground to actually make the bricks that made the houses. So let's have a look at some of the animals that we've got packed away here. So this is one of my favourite boxes, and you'll see why in a minute. Two rather large bones in here, and I'm going to look at this one first. Look at that. Absolutely huge. That is the tibia, or lower leg bone, in a human that would be a shin bone, of an aurochs. An aurochs is an ancestor, that's extinct today, of the modern domesticated cow. Now, cow or cattle were first introduced into this country about 6,000 years ago at the beginning of the Neolithic or New Stone Age. This though is much, much older. In fact, it probably dates back to about 59, 60,000 years ago. And we know at the time this country was slightly cooler than today. And so the animals that were living here were cold adapted species. And of course, an animal like aurochs could live in a sort of range of conditions. So what I love about this, just, it's just one small part of what was in a huge animal that probably stood up to about six feet tall, something like that. Now the one next to it, is perhaps slightly more obvious, this is a part of a tusk. It's almost certainly part of a mammoth tusk. Absolutely colossal animal, a woolly mammoth. There were actually warm adaptive species called just mammoth, but this is a, probably a woolly mammoth because of the climatic conditions at the time. Very, very fragile. These, these items are semi-fossilised. They've been buried in the ground, they've been compacted, and they're slowly, or they were slowly, turning to rock. But when found in the 19th century, not a huge amount of care was taken with removing from the ground, which is why they perhaps are not not the best condition and why they're not on display. They are way too fragile to display. In fact, it's not even a very good idea to handle them too much. So, not only do we have though tusk from mammoth, we also have teeth. So, and they are in fact the biggest teeth you'll find in mammals, inside elephants. There we go. There's one there. That is a, a mammoth molar and indeed it is mammoth in size as well the whole point with this is they, they were herbivores so they were grazed on grass and other vegetation and they needed these huge flat surfaces and that's the top of the tooth there to grind down the food that they were eating the other interesting thing about mammoth teeth is that they grew from the back of the mouth in humans of course when we lose a tooth it grows up from underneath these actually grew from the rear of the mouth and came forward to replace the tooth that then fell out the front or was worn down. And that's how they developed. As they wore down their teeth, further teeth would come forward from the back until eventually, in old age, they were no longer replaced, a bit like humans. But in their case, because of all the grinding of the vegetation and the eating, once they ground down, they would often die of starvation, we think, because they had no more teeth to grow. But they still lived, we think, to about 60, 70 years of age, a bit like a, a modern elephant. That's a wonderful thing. Very good condition that one. Now we have animals that are extinct. I mean mammoth became extinct about 10,000 years ago we think, but we have animals that still survive today. So we just budge these boxes up a bit. So in here, quite obviously, we have bits of reindeer. So I love that, that's actually a small part of quite heavily restored, I suspect, and conserved um, reindeer antler 
fact you can see there it says it's from Fisherton Anger and in fact it says Pleistocene there as well referring to the period that it was it was found rather when it lived but uh, we have there another piece of tine there from an antler and then we've got parts of the jaw as well there with teeth still in situ and various other bones we're going back to extinct species on well, another one of my favorite bones and I think this just gives you this one here I mean it just gives you a real insight into the size of these animals look at that that's just ridiculous um, this is a humerus or part of the humerus a very small part of the humerus from a woolly rhino so a small part of the humerus bone which in a human of course would be the bone from the elbow to the shoulder the funny bone so this would be on the front sort of upper leg of the rhino but another absolutely colossal herbivore that would have grazed on the probably the steppe-like conditions the siberian steppe-like conditions of this area during during the uh, so-called ice age you should really say ice ages because as i said there are a whole series of these cooler periods sort of broken with warmer periods now thinking about the rhino in front of us here we've got a whole cabinet full of various animal bones but the one i'm going to open up is this one here that has some rhino teeth in now these are a lot smaller than the mammoth you were probably expecting to see quite large teeth like the mammoth teeth but they're not like that at all they're much much smaller so in fact there's there's one there look there's the there's the the crown of it and part of the root at the bottom there and that's quite a nice one there absolutely fabulous but very very fragile but there are lots of them gives you an idea perhaps of just how many of these animals were roaming around here and I think that's the key point here is, is that what this shows us is that um, this area over, over, over the millennia if you like has, has changed greatly that during these ice ages the, the, the climate and the conditions in this area have changed radically to how they are today and it's quite sobering a way to think that in fact at this moment we could well just be in one of those warmer periods in the so-called ice age or the Pleistocene and in future due to circumstances completely outside of our control things could become a lot more colder and a lot more inhospitable than they are today.